Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd ayyul ahbab, ayyul ahabbati fillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and bless you and forgive us and forgive you Guide us and guide you, bless us with tawfiq in all of our affairs And bless the Muslim ummah everywhere with guidance and sincerity To come back to Allah azza wa jal away from bid'ah wa shirk wa kufr wa, wa, uh, Heresy and the other problems that plague our ummah and divisions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite the Muslims on ikhlas with the better al-sunnah. Sunnah to Nabiya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala faham as-salaf hadhi ummah. Ameen ya rabbil alameen. Ayyu la habbati fillah. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam prophesies for us that we would divide. So we should not be surprised that we have divisions, even though it hurts us, it hurts our hearts. We hate to see our brothers and sisters uh, divided, fighting amongst one another, cursing one another, hating one another, killing one another in many places. But it's the harsh reality, and the way to rectify our condition to where at least some of us can save ourselves from the hellfire. And at least some of us can practice what the Prophet وسلم, wanted us to practice, and that's that unity that Allah and His Messenger وسلم, called us to. The, uh, Allah Taala says, "Fi Kitabi Kareem Kareem, wa'atasimu bihabli la jamiin wa la tafarroku." Hold on, all of you, steadfast to the rule of Allah, and do not divide. Allah prohibited divisions, and this is what happened to the nations before us, the, amongst the Jews and the Christians. They divided. They divided, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions all throughout the Qur'an. Look at Surah Al-Bayna. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفْرُوا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّمَ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفْرُوا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّمَ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا and the, um, the other ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, the first ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that the people of the book Ahl Kitab, that they divided when they received the bayana, when they received the evidence, when they received the dalil, when they received the hujjah, when they received the haq, when they received the truth, that's when they divided. This is the case. The truth is presented, then the people begin to differ, misinterpret, reinterpret, make it fit their aql, make it fit their jama'ah, make it fit their group, make it fit their sect. This is what happens. This is what happened to the people before us. And the Prophet ﷺ said we'd follow their sunnah. The Prophet ﷺ said you would follow the way of those who came before you. Hand span by hand span. Arm, link, arm span by arm span. Until they enter the hole of the dhub. And I explained this before that the dhub is a type of lizard. We have them all here, all throughout Saudi Arabia. And it's a delicacy for some of the Bedouins. And this dhub, to catch him, you have to pour water in the hole. The hole, because he lives in like a tunneled out cave, a, a dugout. And it's not a simple thing. You can't just stick your hand in there. Plus, he'll bite you. The Prophet ﷺ made tashbi between our following the people who came before us in shirk, in bid'ah, in khurafa, in, in, in going astray. You will follow the way of those people who came before you. Even if they entered the hole of the dhub, even if they entered this hole, you would follow them. You would follow them into it. This is what has happened to our ummah. And this is why our response must be to unify. Our response must be to come back to those principles in Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so we can unite properly. We can't remain divided. We can't keep dividing. But the good news is the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam said that there will always be some holding on to a sunnah. Yes, they're going to be attacked. Yes, people are going to dislike them. Yes, people are going to curse them. Yes, people are going to make dua against them. But if they're, if they're truly of the successful ones that the Prophet ﷺ said, La yadurhum, wa la they, they won't even be sad. Why? 
because they won't be harmed. The Prophet ﷺ said to Sahih Muslim, in Bukhari wa Muslim, قال صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تزال طائفة من أمتي ظاهرين على حق حتى يأتيهم أمر الله وهم على ذلك وكما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم there won't cease to be a group a, nation, a group from my nation that continues to be on the truth until the command of Allah descends and in another narration ولا يضرهم من خالفهم ولا من خذرهم حتى تكون الساعة that no one will harm them even if they differed with them until the day of judgment so yes there's going to be difference people don't like you refuting someone who's made legitimate minhaj aqidah mistakes in the religion that have to be this is an obligation on someone someone has to stand up this is fardul kifaya that someone has to stand up and rud and refute bid'ah refute ahla bid'ah and refute mistakes it's it's from Islam. That is it. There's no we can't get around that. We have to. This is protection of Islam. This is how this is what has kept Islam from deteriorating to the extent that we see the the Jews and the Christians their religion. Look how they split. How many Bibles are there? How many versions are there? Do do you think that just because the Quran in, in and of itself, if Allah didn't protect it, Subhanahu wa Taala, His divine speech. And if Allah didn't make men and women who stood st st uh, steadfast and firm on the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to safeguard this religion, that's what He gave them that uh, that duty of refuting newly invented matters trying to enter the religion. Oh, let's celebrate the Prophet's birthday. Let's say that Allah is everywhere. Let's refute the fact that Allah subhanahu wa taala rose above His throne, or or that He's uh, above the heavens or let's say that Allah didn't descend all of these types of newly invented matters that the Prophet ﷺ didn't discuss his Sahaba didn't discuss because they accepted the Nasus the, the Nas was from the message of Allah ﷺ as far as the Ahadith although it is Wahi, it is revelation it's from Allah on the tongue of the messenger of Allah ﷺ and through his actions etc but the Qur'an is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the angel Jibreel who carried that message to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the form of revelation. And that message cannot be distorted. This is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, articulated and followed. He believed he told us, he's the one, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who told us Allah descends to the lowest heaven every last of the night. So it's not for us to di dispute that or to, to misinterpret that or to say, well, there's different views on that. There's different opinions. No, none of those views, even if they come from great imams, sometimes cannot be, there's no ijtihad muqabal nas There is no striving to get a, a jurisprudent uh, ruling or to make a new uh, interpretation or what have you when you have a direct nas you have nasus from kitab illa wa sunnat rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam you have te text divine text you can't supersede the text with the opinions of men this is the basic uh, shahid i'm trying to articulate so ayyul habbati fillah may allah bless us to be from the from ahlus sunnati wal jamaah those people who are the same sect the Prophet ﷺ said about them. The Prophet ﷺ said, the Jews would break into 71 sects, the Christians into 72 sects, my ummah into 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. He said, who are they, Ya Rasul? They said, who are they, Ya Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He, Sallallahu Rabbi wa Sallam, alayhi, said, those who are upon what I'm upon and what my companions are upon, radiyallahu ta'ala anam ajma'in. So may Allah bless us to be uh, upon what the companions of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, are upon. Wa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.